happy Monday. Thank you for joining me here tonight. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make lovely and quirky embroidery kits for the beginning crafter. And I am here every weeknight at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. That's 9.30 Eastern and 6.30 Pacific. And it is the time that we can just relax and craft together. And I craft for about an hour here in the evening and I work on projects from beginning to end so you can be part of the whole entire process along the way and just come and make stuff with me. Uh, so tonight we are starting the embroidery of the month. So I, I, this month is the first embroidery of the month series that I'm starting. So uh, the first one to be released is this cute little swan with the crown. I'm wearing my little uh, <laughs> crown here basically to go with it. So we are going to start stitching this up tonight. I have all the parts from the supplies bundle that I'm using for it and uh, we are going to just get started. So I'm super stoked. Uh, the pattern is available. Uh, that's an instant download pattern. Uh, make sure to check your spam folders uh, for the email but that is uh, a link below here. It's on penguinandfish.com and then the supplies bundle is also still available available till the end of the month. And after the end of the month, then both the pattern and the supplies bundle, they go away. So, all right, you guys, let's get started. Here is the finished guy right here. And I got all the supplies uh, down here. So let's get going. Oh, we should all wear crowns every day. I think so. Okay. So here are the supplies I have. And uh, um, I also have it pulled up. I know a lot of you guys work like this, but I also have it pulled up on my my iPad here so I can reference the colors and, and the stitches. So here, here are the stitches used. Uh, how to do the stitches, we'll go over all those for sure. Um, some instructions for you and then the pattern. You could actually probably trace the pattern right from your iPad if you wanted to. And a reversed one if you are using some sort of like reversible transfer pen or something like that. So that is the pattern. I just have it up here so I can reference like colors and stitches. So I'm just going to have it open like that uh, for me here so I can see it. And uh, all right. I mean, luckily, I, I actually have the finished one. <laughs> I, I can cheat because I do have the finished one right here so I can I can look at that. But uh, all right. Let's see what we have here. Oh, you guys are receiving your Christmas cards. Oh, that's awesome. Yay. So I, I, I sent out a whole pile of Christmas cards. I'm glad, or, or holiday cards. So I'm glad you guys are getting them. Yay. That makes me happy. Be sure if you get one to look at the back, <laughs> back of it if you, if you missed that part of the card. All right. So the bundle comes with a half yard of fabric. So that's like obviously way more fabric than, than we need. But I was kind of thinking, gosh, I, I haven't quite decided on this, but I'm kind of thinking it would be fun to make this into a pillow. Gosh, I don't know. I don't know if I want to make it a pillow, but you know what I want to do? I want to do hand quilting on it. So I got to turn it into something that I can do. Like I want to go around it with just like little hand quilting stitches. So I don't know quite what I'm making yet. So, so I think I'm going to make it, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to put it with um, a whole pile of fabric around it, like more than I would normally use. I might just chop this this in half and do like a full uh, half yard. So th this is a, I think this is a 36 to 38 uh, inch wide fabric. So I think that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna cut this since it's folded, like I have a fold line here, I'm going to just cut it with my scissors right along that line. Let's just double check that that was the right line. And then I will just stitch it right in the middle. So normally in my kits, yeah, I'll just go right in that line. Normally in my kits, you'll have like the right, the exact right size that you need to make the wall art. But for these supply bundles, like for these embroidery of the months, they're going to be different than my normal kits. So it'll vary. Sometimes, you know, these might be, might throw a kitchen, like a, 
a uh, a tea towel in here instead. Sometimes it might be fabric. Um, all right, I'm gonna save this for later in case that's like the back of it or something. I don't know, depending on what I'm making, I don't know. So I'm gonna start off by just pressing my fabric just to get it all, you know, prepped and nice looking for us to start. So I'm going to use the uh, the uh, stick and stitch sheet. So all the bundles get a stick and stitch, a pre-printed stick and stitch sheet. So I've already pre-printed these. I am going to trim this excess off. So let's let's do that. I don't need all it on. I mean, it's not going to hurt, but it'll fit in the hoop a little bit better. Uh, trimming it down. Oh, geez, everyone's getting their cards. That's awesome. Never really done that before, so I'm, I'm glad. <laughs> I'm glad. Uh, glad you guys are liking it. I'd love to. I'd love to keep doing. Keep doing more cards. All right, so I'm going just right in the middle of my giant piece of fabric here. It might be a little bit annoying with all this extra fabric while I'm stitching, but I'm going to do it anyway, just because. I want to make something out of this, I just don't know what yet. Uh, it might be a pillow, maybe like a cute, gosh, I don't need any more bags. I was like, ooh, it could be a cute tote bag. It could be a cute just um, zippered pouch. Maybe I'll do that. Like a cute zippered pouch, like maybe this big. I kind of like that idea. I'm still going to stitch it in the middle because I don't know for sure. Um, but I kind of like that. I kind of like this little tote bag. I can always use more of those little zippered pouches. All right, so I'm just sticking this right in the middle. I, I just did that really quick, but it was on, uh, this is the stick and stitch material uh, from Selkie. It is um, sticky on one side and it just like fabricy on the other side. And it has like just this backing to protect it um, from the stickiness uh, when you run it through your printer. But the beautiful bit about the stick and stitch is you can print directly onto it from whatever pattern you have so the lines are perfect like you're not you're not tracing it so it's not going to be like you're tracing of the design it is the design so that's that's why i love it and then this this just comes off in um in water uh after a while so there we go i'm gonna stick that right in the middle would i applique it onto a bag i think i would just make this the bag like i would just um cut it afterwards, although applique would be really cute too. You know, I'd probably just make kind of like a, like about this big, kind of like a quilted padded bag almost, because I want to do that hand stitching, so it might be neat. Uh, I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> something. I'm excited, I, but I, I like this idea of this tote bag for some reason. Or not tote bag, a little zipper, zipper pouch. So maybe I'll do that on, on the video here too, if we get this done early. All right. I have my hoop right here. So how I'm gonna do that is, I'm gonna just tilt you guys a little bit more. All right. Oh, maybe I'll back it with, with a material or something. That, that might work to do a tote bag, or a, not a tote bag, a zipper pouch. All right, so I'm going to separate my hoops. So you got your inner and outer hoop. Let's throw the inner hoop underneath. Luckily with this white fabric, you can see pretty well through it. Now if you want, you could put um, a piece of batting here or a piece of interface so you don't see the stitches on the back. I'm gonna just try and stitch where I'm not doing a bunch of jumps so I don't see the stitches on the back. Okay, so there I've tightened it a little bit. Now I'm going to just kind of pull, uh, pull the sides, like pull on either end at the same time, uh, just to kind of make it taut. I don't really want to stretch it, but I do want it to be taut. I don't want, I don't want it to feel like there's any bubbles in it. This hoop seems to be holding everything pretty well though, so that's good. These are some new bamboo hoops that we got. Kind of like playing with those. 
All right, and then once I got it all kind of how I like it, I'm just like taut enough, I'm gonna just tighten it up. Actually, maybe a little less here. Okay, so let's uh, look at our colors. We'll grab a needle. So the bundle comes with uh, two embroidery needles here. I'm just going to, it has just like some washi tape there. I'm just gonna yank, yank this right out. There we go. And the washi tape's reusable, so you can actually just stick the needle right back in there. Okay, needle. Oh, I got my, I got my scissors here. I did press, um, I pressed my fabric, Kathy. Um, this doesn't get pressed. This just, uh, the stick and stitch, you can just stick it on. All right, I'm gonna just take all of the floss out of the little bag here all right away. Okay. And I think I am going to start, so just so you guys can see, I do have my, my iPad up there again with all my stitches and the color. So it's the colors and you can see written what stitches are on and stuff. I'm going to start on the outlines, I think. I just like the idea of starting where I can get like, where it feels like I got a big part of the area done all at once. So I think I am going to start with the actual swan. So I'm going to shush these out to the side, the swan is uh, this pretty tealy blue color. So I'm gonna just get about 24 inches. You don't wanna use the whole thing all at once, then you'll be like pulling forever and ever. It'll be really difficult. So I'm gonna just get about eh, 24 inches or so. And then snip it off. If you're doing, if you like are pulling from one of these that have like multiple in, I would just pull the whole, all three of them to the 24 inches and snip up them. You got all three ready to go. But this one just has, has the one color in. All right, so I am going to split the threads now. So you can, you can stitch with all six threads, but um, I, I like stitching with three. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just find one piece of thread here. So this is six strand embroidery floss. It is not tightly wound, so you can easily pull threads from them. The whole idea with six strand embroidery floss is that you can, um, you can decide how thick you want your lines by how thick you have your thread. And how thick you have your thread is uh, how many strands you have in it. So I like the thickness of the three strands, so I'm going to pull three. So I separated one right here from the rest and I have it just, I'm kind of pinching it just gently and I'm going to pull on the one and let the rest of it gather at the end there. It looks like it's going to be a whole giant huge knot, but once you get to the end, it just plops itself right down and you can just run your fingers through and it just, there's no knots. It just releases really easily. So that's, that's my one strand. I'm going to do that two more times. There, just grab another one and you can actually go really fast. Zoop. There you go. There's two. So it is, it is a lot quicker than trying to grab three in this hand and three in this hand and pull. This is actually much faster. Shoop. <laughs> it always needs a sound effect. I don't think I've ever done that without making that noise. Okay, so this is uh, three that are still together. I can set that aside for now. And these three I can just kind of line up the ends and we'll be good to go with that. We're just kind of reassembling our embroidery floss. There we go, ends are lined up and then you can just run your hand through it. And we are all, all prepped there. I think I got a little twisted at the bottom here. There we go. Okay, <laughs> separating threads is very therapeutic. It is. It is kind of magical. Like I feel like whenever you can do one of those little, little bits, um, those little magical tricks, it, it's just exciting. <laughs> I like that. So yeah, I'm using three strands. I use three strands throughout, but you can really use what you like. I mean, there's enough thread. There should be enough thread if you wanted to do six strands. Uh, you might be pushing it a little bit, but there's definitely enough if you want to do three. I'm just going to show you guys this again. We had done, oh, here's our little floss guide. We had done this floss guide a while, 
floss thickness guide. So here's an example. Here's six strands all together, and here's just one strand. So look, look at the difference. And we did a grid of like all. Here's one, two, three, four, five, six strands. So this is six strand embroidery floss. So here's what six strands would look like. Here's what three would look like. And I, I kind of like that. I kind of like it right in the middle like that. So that's that's what I'll be doing throughout this whole thing, really. But it would be kind of delicate if you did like maybe you did a bold like six strand for the swan, but like maybe maybe dragonfly like wings were just one strand or something. Like you could you could get creative like that as well. I know a lot of people like using two strands. Sylvia, you can for sure use two strands. All right, I'm gonna tie a knot in uh, the end. All right, just like that. And uh, then I will thread the other end. So the way I like threading is, there you can see all my strands there. I like the pinch method. So what I do is I kind of, I get, first of all, I like a nice sharp edge. So let's, let's just get the scissors and get that nice edge all cleaned up like that. And then I, um, Pinch it in between my two fingers. I'm gonna try and stay in focus here. So if I unpinch my fingers, you can kind of see the thread pop out right there, right? So pinch and unpinch, and there, right there, right when I'm starting to see it, I'm gonna put the eye of my needle over the top and kind of push down and keep on um, unpinching. And then I can just grab all those threads. And there we go, we are threaded. But I, I use that pinch method all the time, no matter like what, what I'm using. Um, some people like doing where they put both strands and then they like put it on their needle like this to get like a nice sharp edge like that. But then you have to put six strands through the eye of your needle, uh, not just three. So I, I like the pinch method the best. All right, you guys, uh, well, let's start stitching this guy. Um, I think I'm gonna start maybe, uh, like, let's just look at the design again here. I think I'm gonna start, I'm just gonna start, I think, right here and come, oops, come underneath his chin and neck and then just kind of keep doing the outlines and uh, come back around and, and maybe hit these little feathers along along the way. This will definitely take more than one 24-inch um, piece, so uh, I think we'll do that. All right, so I'm going to start with an away knot, and this is a way so you don't have tons of knots on the back. I can kind of show you. So like here's the back of my original, you can see that there's no knots on the back at all, and it's super nice and clean. It's it's flat. Um, I like stitching this way because when you have a knot on the back, you also have the little frayed little end on the back too. And I feel like when I'm stitching every once in a while, my thread will get caught on all the little knots on the back. And uh, you might be stitching like for a while and not realize, oh, I have a whole big loop caught on some knot on the back. Uh, this, this way where you do it without knots eliminates that problem altogether, which I mean is primo uno, the reason uh, why, why I like this way of doing it, the weaving in the ends way that I'll show you guys how to do. Um, so anyway, this is what the back will most likely look like, or it should look pretty close to this. I also don't jump around all that much. Like here's a little bit of a jump, like from here to here, but you, you can see that I didn't really do that anywhere else. I try and kind of have the backs of my stitches follow the lines on the front too. So you can't, you can't see, like here's the only place you can see kind of a jump. And that's just when I have the light shining behind it. Oh, you can see kind of all these little jumps here, but you know, otherwise you can't really tell. All right, so here's how you do the no knot method. I know it's funny, but you do start with a knot. <laughs> um, I'm going to, like I said, I'm going to start here, but I'm going to put the needle in from the front to the back about four inches or so away from there. So I'm going to go like right here. And I'm going to have it so it doesn't cross over any other, other of the lines. Oh, Ray, right, you got your card too. Awesome. All right. So now my knot 
is on the front there. I'm going to just let it hang out for a little while and I'm going to start stitching. So this is the back stitch. Uh, I, I, I mean, you can stitch however you want, but I'm, I'm doing the lines in the back stitch. That's how it is in the pattern. So I'm coming, even though the line starts there, I'm coming up a stitch length or so away. My stitches are about an eighth of an inch. Between a sixteenth and an eighth of an inch, I kind of vary throughout. So um, anywhere within there is good. All right, so I'm going, starting a stitch length away from my starting point, and then I'm going backwards. So even though I'm going to end up going this direction, I'm going to stitch backwards just a stitch. Oh, you guys, I keep hitting hitting the camera. Sorry about that. Got a little wiggle going. All right, there's our first stitch. So I'm going to come up a stitch away from that hole, our first hole right there. All right, right like that. And then I'm going to go back again to our first hole right here, and I'm going to go in that same hole. And that is basically the back stitch. You go forward a hair, forward a stitch um, length away, and then you go back in the same hole. And it's called the back stitch because you're making that backwards movement to make to make the stitch. So you can see this is just covering up our black lines from the stick and stitch uh, sticker here. But even if you do see black, it doesn't matter because we're gonna wash all all that away. So I'm just kind of turning turning the piece as I go. If you have an embroidery stand, you can, you don't really have to turn the piece, but I, I just like turning it to however is most comfortable. So on the back, just so you guys know what I'm doing, I'm, I'm okay, I'm going to start the stitch here, but what, what my hand, my left hand is doing on the back is feeling everything. So, uh, um, the needle is like in between my fingers. I'm actually even kind of separating this thread, the thread that um, from our last stitch from the working needle so it doesn't jumble up on each other. My hand on the back is active. I'm, so here I'm pulling it through the, to the front. I'm kind of still keeping those two spots separate so they don't twist up on each other. And when it gets to there, I just kind of let it, let it go. So the nice thing about having my hand back here and feeling every stitch is that I can usually tell pretty quickly if something's going wrong. So now here I'm coming up this way. Again, I'm feeling that needle come through. I'm feeling the thread come through. And there my fingers are kind of all already right there for when I make the next stitch. I'm even, I'm even pulling the fabric, oh, pulling the thread away from where I'm going to make my next stitch so it doesn't get in the way. So I know a lot of people ask, want to know what the, the what the left hand is doing, and it is, it is active. And I mean, you know, that will come with practice, but if you haven't, um, if you just like stitch like this and you're not feeling the back at all, give it a try sometime, like get your hand back there. Uh, it, it really does help. Um, you get a sense of what, what's going on back there. Like all of a sudden you'll feel something weird and then you just take a look and it's like, oh, that got caught on this little knot or something, you know, or, ooh, I have a, it feels like I should have had more thread than what I did there. Well, let's take a look. And then you might find, find, you know, that you got a little knot somewhere or something. But yeah, so my hand is always back there. And that's typically why I'm turning, turning my piece as well is just so I can get my left hand to reach where I'm stitching. And you can't do that all the time, but um, it is like having a second pair of eyeballs on the back. So the back stitch is totally one of my favorite stitches and I use it um, primarily for outlining things, you know, like we are now. And I, 
almost exclusively use it for outlining. I mean, there's a lot of other stitches that you can use for outlining, but there's something about it um, that I just love. And, uh, and what it is, is I it just feels like embroidery to me. I mean, you can see each stitch. It's like a little string of pearls almost. Like you can see the shadow and the light hit each stitch. Ooh, little sticker coming up there. Um, so I, I love that aspect of the back stitch. It's like just a curly row. Um, there are other stitches, like you could use a stem stitch that will kind of blend your line together. It'll look like one little mass of line versus all the little pearls. And that, depending on how you want your piece to look, I mean, both those are, are fun. Painting with thread. Exactly. And there are, you can go to the extreme with that idea too, uh, Sylvia, the painting with thread. And, and we should do that again sometime. Um, I have done that here once or twice before. Kind of, it's, it's kind of nicknamed thread painting, or maybe it's, I don't know, maybe it's not really a nickname. Maybe that's the official name. I don't know. But uh, it is where you do like your short and long stitches. We can, we can go over that sometime. And you change the colors enough that it does almost look like you're painting or the finished thing looks like a painting. But those take a lot of time. Um, it would be fun to, fun to do one of those here. That could actually be one of our embroidery of the months could be a little thread painting project. I'll put that on the list. That would be kind of fun, huh? Oh man, when did I start embroidering? Well, for me, embroidery kind of started out as, as cross-stitch. I kind of consider those in the same, same category. And that was actually one of the first crafts that I've ever, ever done. <laughs> uh, or a, a babysitter came over once when I was little and she had a cross-stitch. And uh, I was basically stuck to her the whole entire time she was there. And had to go buy a cross stitch like right away, you know, a little Christmas ornament or something. And I don't know, I was pretty hooked on making all those little, little X's and have it magically turn into something. And so that's kind of where I started. And I, I got into embroidery, like more like this, because it felt, it felt more like drawing to me, like following the lines and you get to just choose stitches, you gotta play with stitches a whole lot more. Oh, Sylvia, it is not necessarily hard, um, thread painting. It, it, it's just, it takes planning um, a little bit more, I think, than, than this. And planning and patience, let's call it that. <laughs> you gotta be willing to sit with a tiny little project for for a while i think but uh, it really does give a cool effect i don't know if you guys remember that i did a a thread painting it was only about this big of the plant that sits behind me when it only had like three leaves now there's like 30 leaves on it but um that was a thread painting thing that i did uh, oh gosh that was a few years ago now all right, you guys, I am getting close to um, not having so much thread here anymore. I'm going to do maybe a couple more stitches, and then we're going to weave in the end. So again, I like weaving in the end instead of tying a knot. Okay, I'm going to do one more after this. See, so we only, we only got that far, so. All right, so I got about eh, four inches or so left on here. We'll finish that last stitch so that my uh, my um, needle is on the back. Oh, Lucy, that's exciting! Uh, Lucy says she's teaching kids embroidery at, at her library. Ah, how fun. All right, so here is the back. Um, this is actually, it almost looks like a, a, um, a stem stitch almost on the back. Or it is like a split stitch or a stem stitch. Um, a combo uh, on the back. So like this, if this was on the front, that would be awfully pretty too. But I do, I do like that beady, the beady look of a, of a uh, back stitch. But anyway, all right, so we're going to finish this off. 
Uh, without a knot, what we're going to do instead is weave in the ends and we're going to go back and forth three times. It's kind of that third time that locks it in place. So I'm just trying to grab as many little threads as I can. And we're going to go back the other way. So this is the second time. See this right here? That's our, that was our, from our away knot on the front. We'll be dealing with that in a sec here. All right, so that's the second time. Oop, lost my little thread there. Dang it. Let's re-thread that quick. Pinch that through again. I might need to get a nice clean cut. Oh, nope, I got it. All right, and then uh, the third time is like that final bit that locks it in, in place. Sometimes if you only do two and you yank on it, you can, it'll pull out. But if you do three, that kind of, that's the lock. All right, and then the nice thing is that you can snip this right real close to your stitches like there, and then that little piece is away. So there you go. Nice and smooth, no knots. You're not going to catch any threads on this at all, and it just looks really clean and pretty. So that's, that's how I like to finish my ends. Um, now this away knot, since we didn't have, well, here, I'll, I'll show you what we do with that and we'll talk about it a little bit. But so here is our knot. We are going to weave in that end too. Uh, this was just kind of a, a way to hold down that thread that we're going to use to weave in later. Um, this was a way for us to just kind of reserve that thread. So I'm going to cut off that knot. That's garbage. And now if we flip to the back, now that little thread is loose and we can weave in that end, end as well. So it might look like it's wasting a lot of thread, but you really only have to do this when you don't have any other stitches on your piece because we can start our next thread by weaving in right where we left off. All right, so three times that was one. Two and three. There we go. Grab my scissors. All right, so there is at the beginning. So there's no knot at the beginning, nothing to get to catch a thread on or anything. So look how smooth and just nice and pretty that looks. So that is. Uh, the technique that we'll be using for the rest of this. Uh, you know, it's maybe a little quicker to just tie your knot and go, but I'm telling you, if you've ever caught a whole big loop of thread onto a little knot and didn't realize it till like 30 minutes later, you're gonna wish you did it this way. <laughs> that is, that's just the most annoying thing ever. Um, all right, so we have our thread. Um, from when we split our thread earlier. So we can just go ahead and, and thread that through our needle. Um, some people, and I do this sometimes, but you can separate these again, like take the three strands apart and put them back, back together. Your thread will lay a little flatter, but meh. <laughs> We've done that once before, like as a little test, and you can see a little bit of a difference, but not so much that I want to dinking around with pulling the three threads apart and putting them back together. But if I was doing like a super, you know, perfectly flat, serious piece, then maybe I would, maybe I would do that. All right. So I'm going to do the pinch method again. And there we go. And uh, some of you had mentioned uh, using a needle threader. I think I have one of those here. Yeah. So here's, here's a needle threader. So how do you use one of these? is it's just a, a little easier to thread because it's so thin like it's much thinner than our thread so i'm going to throw that through the needle and it's stiff it doesn't bend like floss so it's easier to kind of get it in there there we go and then it has this little entry point you can kind of even loop it down like that There you go. That just makes the opening bigger. So then you're, you're threading through the needle threader and then you can pull through and there you go. So that's, that's another way to do it. 
I'll have to maybe find some needle threaders and that could be in one of our bundles sometime. So I'm hoping to I'm hoping to ramp up uh, just so you guys know. Well, let's let's get started. Um, I'm not going to do a knot this time. So remember, we did the knot last time to make our away knot. This time, I am I'm going to do no knots at all, because what we're going to do instead is weave in the end right where we left off. Um, so we're going to go three times. So I need to end up here. So I'm going to go. Uh, I'm going to start here. One, two, three. So I'm going to start on this side so I end up right at the spot that I want to start at. All right, and then, then I'll leave like, you know, just a, a little bit there so I don't accidentally pull it through. I can even hold my thumb there if I want. Okay, two. And three. All right, and then I can snip off that little extra there because we don't we don't need that. Okay, and we're ready to just start off where we where we left off right there. As if we never even stopped. All right. So yeah, so I, I'm hoping to ramp up um, some of the supplies that we have in the shop, the penguin and fish shop. Uh, like I want to get the water soluble markers in there. I know people have been asking about that. I want to get this the white fabric that I like using here and the cream colored fabric, the, the unbleached fabric that I like using for embroidery. Uh, I'd love to get those up in the shop. I want to get needles up in the shop. Um, we talked about some penguin and fish merch. I would love to do that too. Uh, but like some needle threaders, um, even a needle minder would be kind of fun. So anyway, if there's any fun things that you guys would, oh yes, kitchen towels, those will be, those will be up in the shop soon too. So I'd like to, I'd like to bulk up on a few of those things because I know a lot of times that stuff can be a little difficult to find. If you guys can find it all in one place. I know that's just makes life a whole lot easier. So yeah, if you guys have any other suggestions, feel free to let me know here or post it in the penguin and fish crafters group or email me all of the above. <laughs> all right. I I think we will go on, we'll go until we finish this thread. I think I'm going to, well, so now here's where you got to start planning, right? So I could continue keeping on the current line I'm on, which is like all these bloops, or I could kind of work and just get everything all at once as I go. So like I could go to about this stitch and then get this little tail in and then kind of jump back and continue the feathers. And then I could go to here and then get these feathers on the way back. I think that's kind of what I'm going to do. I'm going to just kind of, you know, I like mapping out my way. So I have like the least amount of jumping around on the back. So I use the least amount of floss. So I'm always kind of thinking, Ooh, what order should I stitch things in? And I think I am, even though your brain just kind of wants you to continue along the line you're on, I'm going to just kind of continue and try and get everything that's in my path. So uh, let's see how that goes. And I, I, I'm probably going to need more thread too. Um, tonight we'll probably just go until this thread is done. All right, I'm going to start this tail now. And I'm going to tell you why here. Um, I could have done a couple extra stitches here, right? I could have gone like like two or three more stitches, probably like two stitches here. But this wing is physically, like if, if you're looking at a real swan, this is um, in front of the tail. Like this is the front wing. The front wing is in front of the tail. So I usually like stitching the things that are further back before the things in the front. And here's why, like see where this, um, this, 
thread comes out, it's going to be the tail here. If I do that first and here, then when I stitch the feathers that go over it, I could just cross right over it and it will cover up the little end here. Um, and that will make it look as if this front wing is in front of this tail. So keep that in mind. Uh, we'll stitch the tail up quick and then I'll show you, I'll show you what I mean. Oh, I missed some of your guys' comments. I'm gonna have to look back because I know you're saying um, um, some, some things to have in the shop. I know I saw just um, go buy some, some pillowcases to stitch on. That would be really fun. That's, that's like a nice old school um, <laughs> embroidery project, which I kind of love. Uh, you know, that's why I think it'd be cool to do some kitchen towels. I'm working on our January uh, embroidery of the month, um, the bundle for it, and uh, I was thinking that would be really fun on a kitchen towel, towel but just as a, like a, just so you know, the, the January one's going to be just like fancy and pretty, and I really like it. I think you guys are going to like the January embroidery of the month as well, and I'm wondering if it's too pretty for a kitchen towel. <laughs> I might still, you know what, I think I am going to still do it, potentially a kitchen towel. Or if there's, if there's um, something that you guys would be interested in, let me know, because I am, I'm planning um, the bundle for January tomorrow. Oh, like a felt kitty pins kit. Oh yeah, that would be super duper fun. All right, here's my last stitch. And then I'm going to kind of jump back to where I left off here. This isn't such a big jump back to here, so, so I'm going to do that. But here, now I can cover up, I can cover up that starting point of the tail, the thing that's further back. So I just started my stitch a little past it and I'm going to connect. <coughs> connect with this stitch here. And now you can see I've covered up I've covered up, let's make it tight, I've covered up that stitch from the tail. So now it looks like, I mean, so the wing stitch is physically in front of the tail stitch. And that's, that's kind of why I like stitching the things further back first. I think this is going to be in three stitches, this little feather. Oh, a bird, like hummingbirds with metallic thread. Ooh, that would be interesting. Oh, so that would be something fun to have in the, sh in the shop too, is some of that metallic thread. I like that, what is it, the Nishikito thread? I forget who does, the, does that. I'll have to look that up. But that would be fun to, to order some of that and have like some specialty threads in the shop as well. Oh, chickens on kitchen towel. So I, I am thinking, I don't have a, a chicken design yet, but, or a rooster or a chicken or something, but um, that rooster in the Penguin and Fish Crafters group is pretty dang cute, and that would be just adorable on, on a uh, kitchen towel for sure. I need a whole pile of kitchen, new kitchen towels, so maybe we'll do a whole bunch on kitchen towels this year, then I can throw away all my gross ones. All right, here's that stitch again. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm not going in the same hole as the tail because I want this stitch to cover that tail end because this wing is in front of the tail. So hopefully that, that makes sense for you guys. So here, oh, you guys, I keep bumping you. I'm going to have to fix that for tomorrow. <laughs> I just have a cord hanging a little bit low and I keep bumping it, but there, let's get real close. See, there you can see that, um, the wing is now in front of both of those tail ends. So that's just something to think about um, when, when you're stitching, like what's, what's furthest back. I mean, it's subtle, but I do, I do like that little detail. So and we're almost out of thread. So instead of going and jumping around and getting all these feathers, I am just going to keep stitching till I'm done, until the thread runs out. So it'll probably be, you know, a little bit on this this wing and then tomorrow tomorrow I think we'll be able to finish up this blue 
So this is a this is a little bit bigger embroidery. Um, so it'll take a couple hours. I mean, you could you could take you could make this take weeks if you wanted to. Like if uh, like nonstop. Like if you, I mean, you'd have to. There's not definitely not enough thread for this in the bundle, but like you could fill in this whole guy. Like if you wanted to paint paint it, that's that's kind of the other neat thing about an embroidery pattern is that you can do one design in like a bajillion different different ways. Patricia, yes, the black will will wash out as well. This will all kind of flake away everything that's um, printed on here. Sometimes it looks like it doesn't go away all the way, but um, once you once it dries, then it, you can't really tell. So I, um, you know, it's a little like if you have like a white thread and you're trying to wash this out, sometimes it looks like it's there. I just keep kind of rubbing at it. We'll, we'll go over that too. I'll, I'll show you guys how to take this, um, the, the uh, stick and stitch off. Once we're done stitching. So that'll probably be potentially on Friday. I'm hoping we get that far by then. Oh, Kathy, um, send me an email. Let me know what's going on. If you already, if you guys have ordered the PDF and you can't find it, check your spam. Um, for some reason, sometimes the emails like going there. But if, if you're having ordering issues, then yeah, email me for sure. We'll get it to you if you want it. Yeah, for sure. Oh, songbirds with music notes. That would be really fun too. Yeah. All right. I'm almost out of thread again. I think I could get like maybe, yeah, this might be my last stitch here. Yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to let this be my last stitch. Okay. So let's weave in the ends and then we'll take a look at it. So, oh, you didn't have any trouble. Oh, that's good Gretchen. Yeah. I, I'm not sure why there's some issues sometime. And we are actually working on a new way of doing the patterns so that um, we'll have like a library of all the patterns that you've ordered and, and you can like log in and see the library of all your patterns. That's in the works. So that's something something to look forward to um, for, the, for the future for the um, digital patterns and stuff. All right, so that was our Back and forth three times. Then we can just trim, trim the excess away. There we are. We only have this much scrap. That's looking good. And uh, there we are. That's the back looking nice and clean. And front. I think, uh, you know, it doesn't look like much. It's just this line, but that's actually, I think, pretty good progress. I've been kind of chit-chatting and, and stuff too, but um, yeah, based on that, I think we'll for sure get done with this by the end of the week. Um, and hopefully actually even have a day, um, to take the fabric selfie off. Um, and I, I like doing that in a certain way. So we'll take the fabric or uh, not fabric selfie, the stick and stitch. It used to be called fabric selfie. It's called stick and stitch now, the sticker. Uh, and then I like pressing it right away. And I'll show you that sort of process. So I am hoping that we will get there on on Friday. If not, we'll we'll make sure that we get that done on Monday because I want to make sure that you guys know how to use this if you haven't used the um, the stick and stitch before. So anyway, there we go. Good progress for one evening. I always like looking at the back. Um, the other thing is that you know it can give you like a true color of what's what's happening because sometimes with the stick and stitch you know you just see that's that stick and stitch fabric but here it's on the normal fabric so it's kind of you get a glimpse of the colors a little bit better so all right we will uh i'm hoping that we can maybe even finish the the teal blue finish that um blue color of the swan tomorrow all right you guys that is a good first um day here again uh is the finished bit so this was actually done with the fabric selvi as well, or the, I'm sorry, the stick and stitch. So you can see, you can't see any black 
um, all the black washed out. So um, this was done the same way with the stick and stitch. So if you're worried about the black, it, it goes away. So there you go. All right, flipping you around. All right, I got my, my little swan crown on tonight. <laughs> All right, you guys, so here is the progress for tonight. Again, I'm stitching it on this big fabric. You get um, twice as much fabric as this in the bundle, if you're interested in the bundle yet. And I'm doing it big because I thought maybe I'd make it into a pillow and I'd want that extra fabric, or maybe I'll turn it into a little bag and I want that extra fabric. I don't know yet. <laughs> I want to do something. The only thing I kind of want to really do is do some hand quilting though, since I've been all about the hand quilting lately. I want to do hand quilting like around it. I think that would just look so pretty on the white, like with some white thread on the white. I don't know. <laughs> so for some reason I'm stuck on that. So if I make a bag or pillow, it'll probably include that, uh, um, the hand stitching. I'm just making more projects for myself here, aren't I? <laughs> It could just stay in embroidery and be done. That's, it could be that too. Okay, I'm excited to add more color to this though, because that'll, um, once the, all the black goes away and you just see your color, that's really exciting. So awesome, you guys. Thank you so much for joining me on the first embroidery of the month. Uh, like I said, I'm getting ready to put the January one together for you. This one, the swan, will go away uh, um, at the end of December. Um, so it's not a club, it's not a subscription, it's not like something that you have to pay for and forget that you're paying for it. It is just, if you want to do it that month, great. Uh, it does go away though, so if, if you think that at some point you'll want to do it, it's probably going to get it now. Um, new one every single month. So awesome! Yay! I'm excited that we're stitching together again. I will get this up on YouTube. I am all cut up on the YouTubes. Um, now I know I was a little, a little behind on that. So you can rewatch this at Penguin and Fish Movies on YouTube. So I'll get it up tonight and it should be ready in about an hour or so. So awesome, you guys. Have a great evening. I will see you tomorrow. Good night.